So first of all, I'd like to welcome everyone. Thank you for joining Sephardic Heritage International in DC or Shin DC for the special film screening of Hermana um, about the Jewish community of Ankara. So I'd like to, I'd like to, to thank the, the filmmaker, director, Enver Arjak for working with us to make this special screening possible today. And also Susan Barocas um, will be moderating the Q&A. And also just like, I'd like to thank our, I'd like to thank our community partners, Mikveh Israel Congregation, the Synagogue of the American Revolution. I'm in Philadelphia. Also the, also Temple Moses in South Florida. Thank you, I Daniel Hadar and also the Sephardic Jewish Brotherhood of America and Kila Kedosha Yanina in New York. So thank you so much for, for joining us. Sephardic Heritage International in DC builds intercultural bridges while raising awareness of the cultures, arts, and history of the Middle East the Iberian Peninsula, Greece, the Balkans, and Central and Western Asia. And so it's a, it's a pleasure for us to be able to do this film screening today of Hermana, which really pr provides a window into the life of Ankaran Jews in the early 20th century. So I'm going to begin the screening right now. And when the screening is over, the, the filmmaker, will make a presentation to us. So we're now going to begin with that and tell you more after the film. <laughs> Sazlar çalınır çamlı canın bahçelerinde bahçelerin başa değmeyiz bülbül sesi var şarkıların nameleriinde nameleriinde Quando le reni mirò dal campo salia, mirava e nel cielo e in la estreria, vido luz santa en la juderia, che había de nascer, avrà ma vino, avrà ma vino, padre querido, padre bendicio, luz de Israel. Adram Avinu, Padre querido, Padre bendicho, luz de Israel. La mujer de terra quedó priñada, día en día le preguntaba de qué tenés la cara tan demudada. Ea ya sabía el bien que tenía Adram Avinu, Padre querido Padre bendicho, luz de Israel Adram Avinu, Padre querido Padre bendicho, luz de Israel Thank you. Thank you so much for, again, for joining us for this special opportunity to connect with the Jews of Ankara in Turkey and Israel via the film Ermana, directed by Enver Arjak. We've really been thrilled to see the, the big response to this, including a, a almost now 2,000 responses of support from Turkey. And we'd just like to thank all of you for joining us. We're going to provide uh, a link to you 
that will be available for the next 24 hours so that you can access the film. And that is only for the people who have registered. The next part of our, of our program is going to be moderated by Suzanne Barocas. And most people know Suzanne Barocas as, as a food writer, chef, and teacher. But Susan has also been a documentary filmmaker and film festival director, including several years as director of the Washington Jewish Film Festival. Through her work in both film and food, she strives to bring people together and to help people keep alive the history and heritage of their families and communities. She is also dedicated to carrying on the Sephardic culture and cuisine of her paternal grandparents who are from the Ottoman Empire. But she'll tell you more about that as well as about our special guest, Enver Arjak, the director of Ermana. Susan will now present um, Enver Arjak to you, who will do a presentation for us. Great, thank you, Ephraim. I hope everyone can hear. Um, it's a very moving film and a very important film, and it's part of a bigger project that we're going to be talking about. Uh, I just wanted to give some context to who Enver is before we see um, more material from the project and also we'll do a Q&A so we can find out some more. Uh, Enver is an independent researcher, documentary producer and director. He was born in Ankara, Turkey in 1977 and he studied actually archaeology and history uh, of art at Bill Kent University. He's the founder now of a film production company and Irmana is the first film he's actually directed uh, and it's uh, won many, it's won prizes already. It's been seen in Israel and Turkey and Europe and the US. So we're very honored to have you with us today, Enver. Um, I wanted to make a note of two things that I think are rather remarkable. First of all, with this project, Enver has created a groundbreaking model for researching, recording, and preserving Ankara's Jewish community. He's gathered and he's preserving the history of this community, the people, the families, the synagogue, home life, business life, so it won't be lost to us or lost to future generations. Um, and as as uh, Ephraim said, my family came from the Ottoman Empire, my paternal grandparents, including a grandfather who's from Turkey. Um, and uh, I think about all that has been lost from these communities that once flourished in the Ottoman Empire. And so this is especially important and dear to me. The second thing I wanted to point out just before we see the exhibit is that Enver is dedicated and pursuing this work with such passion. He's not Jewish. Yes, he was born in Ankara, but he is not a member of the Jewish community. And so after we see the exhibit, I think we will talk with him about what motivates him, about the film, about the exhibition, and much more. Enver, please, your turn to uh, show us these this way you are saving the memory of this community and and the vibrant life that once existed in uh, Ankara, the vibrant Jewish life. So thank you and take it away, Enver. Hi, thank you, Susan. Good evening to everyone and welcome to brief presentations, presentation of Hermana Project's uh, online exhibition which can be visited from this day on until the end of this month on Sephardic Heritage International DC's website. Actually, I uh, put it on my first slide. Let me start it. So you can see, I shared the link on the left bottom of screen under the film's poster. Here we go. Hermana, the award-winning documentary, has been screened in various international festivals. If you missed the today's special screening, you can still watch it on Blue TV, uh, which is a digital platform like Netflix, available in the USA as well. 
Uh, Hermana is not only a documentary, but it is also a visual archive project, which is supported by Salt Research Center uh, about the untold history of Ankara's Jews. I'm still in the collecting process with new editions of related historical images and documents that will be presented as exhibitions and publications. Uh, I started my research to collect images and documents from the institutional archives and families' archives. I believe the most remarkable ones that I have collected are from the families' archives because those just came to light within this project. The photos were from the various Jewish communities all around the world who have a relationship to Ankara. For a while, I was after the photos of these families, but later they came to me, as you will see in the slides ahead. Thanks to these personal archives, this project has become more intriguing and remarkable. During the documentary shootings, I interviewed hundreds of people to compile an oral history and a visual archive of letters, diaries, and religious papers. It's a deep subject, and this documentary is one of the results of putting all those things together. Thank you to Sephardic Heritage International DC for giving me this opportunity and thank you to the contributors for this archive. So since you just showed this exhibit, let's start with that, which it's remarkable. Thank you, it really is. It's very touching and um, it's a very important collection. So what happens to this collection now? You have oral histories, documents, photographs, Will they? Will the collection be housed in an archive, a museum, and how will people have access to it beyond the website? I will definitely make them available for the public. I mean, they will be housed in a museum or a research center. Actually, there was a shuttle that there would be an exhibition tour starting from California to some multiple destinations in the States. However, because of the COVID-19, we had to cancel the exhibitions around the USA. The initial plan was to donate the copies of the collection to exhibition centers, but I'm still hoping to make it real one day. So it will be uh, publicized in periods. Are you still collecting material? Are people still sending you things, contacting you with material? Yes, I uh, do. And this is not an ending project. It still continues with the new editions. And we do. And welcome. That's great. Anyone who has such treasure. <laughs> Truly. Um, so let's talk about the bigger picture of what drew you to this story, Enver. This is, um, you were born in Ankara, but as we, you know, I said, you're not of the Jewish community. What was the process of discovering the community story, uh, the characters, the elements in the film? How did this happen for you? And honestly, what compels you to take this project forward? The, the, the streets itself inspired me. Actually, it kind of started the fire. And when I first visited the quarter, the historical houses, the old fountains, the synagogue whispered to me what they are expecting, some respect and wishing to be back to their golden age. Unfortunately, there are very few left from the golden age. They are actually in the dark age now. The old buildings are on the verge of collapsing. They are also being burned through sabotage by car park mafia. I tried to make this vandalism visible, which is ignored by the previous authorities of the municipality. I'm glad that the project provided an opportunity to create awareness. I believe the project played its, its role for my aim. I want to stay optimistic about future, uh, that this urban cultural heritage will, take them, will be taken care of by the new authorities of the municipality, I hope. Mm -hmm. So your background in archaeology and research has really made a difference here with this project. Yes? Yeah, my archaeology background is absolutely made positive contributions to my research. 
I followed the methodology and ethics, which I have learned during archaeology education and site experiences. My research is also a sort of archaeology, which can be called urban culture archaeology. We just don't need digging to reach some knowledge. In most cases, just over there, waiting for your effort to bring it to light. This is such a uh, research lovely. project. Yeah. It's a lovely way to approach it. So what has the screening been and what is the, the uh, reaction to the film and the project been in different parts of uh, the world that you've been to? Um, and are there differences in how the audiences respond in different parts of the world? Have you found that? Uh, the common reaction is being surprised. Even in Turkey, it is not well known that Ankara has such a long history for Jews. Mm -hmm. It's mostly known that Istanbul and Izmir are the only cities that have Jewish backgrounds, which started 500 years ago with the immigration of Sephardics from the Iberian Peninsula, Portuguese and Spain. However, the documentary made it much more visible that Ankara has been a homeland for Jews for 2,500 years. So. Uh, this is the remarkable part. Uh, and, mm -hmm. and so has there been any um, kind of differences in how audiences have reacted or pretty much across the board it's the same, how audiences feel about it? I can say similar, but uh, the, a, another common uh, feeling, which is nostalgia and mm. miss the old days. <laughs> It's better, it was better, uh, not worse interesting. Yeah. It's interesting to, to think about it. Um, I know my grandfather is from Turlu in Turkey, so I would love to, a project like this because there were actually, it's about 45 minutes outside Istanbul and I, I've been there, there's actually were a lot of Jews there, Sephardic Jews, a lot named yeah. Barokas too. Yeah. Um, so, you know, when we think about history, there's so much nuance when we remember history. And if we're truthful, it's always a mix of positive and negative. So the history of the Jews of Turkey and the Ottoman Empire is overwhelmingly positive. However, there are some ex experiences that were not, such as the Surname Act and the heavy taxes that happened in, the, in 1942. Um, it's important that we don't hide from this truth. So can you talk about how you explored all the different sides of this community's history and how you found balance, um, how you decided what to include? And if there's anything you left out that was too difficult or controversial to talk about. Let me try to answer. I know, I'm a documentarist uh, who's trying to record past and today for the future. I try to be neutral when I'm approaching the subject for my films. During Hermana interviews, I try to catch the edge. I try to be close to the worst and best memories. I believe that is my responsibility. Sometimes I tried my hardest in my interviews to get as much as I can. I don't hide anything, but I just did not prefer to put all in the documentary. Exhibitions and publications I just mentioned may help to consolidate all stories that I have collected. Uh, so this is what I can record. Mm -hmm. I, so I, I just have one more question for you. Before we go, there are several questions in the chat that I want to get to. I just wanted to talk about one of the really tender elements of the film that comes across as this ongoing connection that like the nostalgia you're talking about, but the connection that so many people interviewed in the film still feel towards Turkey. And they haven't lived there for many years, some of them. It seems very complex, like people were able to connect with this nostalgia, this longing, this sense of loss. Um, and there, any of the negative experience didn't define their relationship to this homeland. Can you 
talk about this and what it, what's that sense of connection that you got from these people? And um, are there ways that they maintained the connection? First of all, we should know that serious amount of Jews in the world had lived as citizen of Ottoman Empire and Republic of Turkey and considered it as homelands. And wherever your homeland, it is your source, which has effect on your shaping, evolving, you know. And right. it's explained by Nesim Sabar in the documentary. It's an inseparable law. And mm. they still have connections. And some still have relatives, by the way, uh, who live in uh, Turkey. Sure. And the feeling what I uh, collected, Anatolia could have been a better place if, uh, if it had kept its cultural richness. Unfortunately, we are far from those good days. My interviews probably exposed that missing potential. I mean, mm -hmm. and this is what I can say. Okay, was there ever any interference of any kind from Anyone who said, oh, you shouldn't be talking about this, or you shouldn't be telling this story? Um, or... You mean as a, uh, <laughs> a trait? <laughs> what kind of? Well, I mean, was there, did anyone in the municipality or anyone in um, any of the people that you tried to interview, were any of them? Mm -hmm. Uh, not wanting to cooperate. Yeah, there, there are there, there, some people don't not, don't prefer to uh, interview, and uh, but they shared some experiences from the families or the uh, mm -hmm. parents, so on. But not all want to be on screen. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, ah, so it's more a matter of being filmed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, yeah. Yeah. All right, great. Well, we have some questions, so I'm going to go to the chat. Um, the first one is, do you know how many Jews lived in Ankara in 1907 when the synagogue was built? Do you know how many were in Ankara? Uh, yes, in we know, we know, we know. Uh, it's around approximately 500, thanks to uh, some sources. We know since 15th century to today. It's uh, always the, not uh, in that uh, population. And the maximum in the beginning of the uh, Turkish Republic in 20s, it's around 5,000 because even from Izmir, Istanbul, uh, people uh, moved to Ankara because it's a new republic and new capital. And which is built in Ankara, not Istanbul. <laughs> and but in the history, that is stable, in around 500. And even the in the opening of the ceremony, uh, synagogue, uh, the year in 1907, we know that uh, that is the number of uh, community. Okay, um, is there the synagogue is still standing today? Correct. Yes, yes. And it's, it, is it being, um, cons is there conservation happening in it? Is it being? Uh, yeah, it, it needs regularly. Renovated, uh, does it need to be renovated? And it's not in uh, perfect condition, but not uh, in bad condition. I mean, it's mm -hmm. always needs uh, such uh, restorations, refurbishings, but it's not in, very bad condition. The houses were worse, <laughs> are worse mm -hmm. uh, uh, condition. I mean, the in the district, mm -hmm. but the synagogue uh, is better than the houses. It opens uh, once or twice in a year in some special ceremonies. People are coming from Istanbul and. Are there people living in the houses now? Yes, but uh, not the Jewish uh, communities. It's uh, 
but some uh, houses are empty, not uh, any residents living. Mm -hmm. um, someone asked if Jews were allowed to own land in the Ottoman Empire. So. Would you repeat it? If Jews were allowed to own land in the Ottoman Empire, my understanding is yes, very much. They own businesses yeah. and land. Yeah. The, the, the answer is, you're right. Um, I think, let's see, somebody said, I think Enver mentioned a very old building in the exhibit. Which one was it? Oh, the synagogue? Um, you mean the houses? I don't know, uh, it doesn't... Hmm? Uh, remember in the video, in the slides, uh, I showed a house that belongs to Albuquerque's, the Albuquerque family. That is mm -hmm. one of them. It is from 1907. And that is the one of the oldest one. And synagogue itself also. Mm -hmm. uh, the building of synagogue, uh, built, I mean, refurbished, we say, because probably there was a synagogue uh, and it's built on it. Uh, but the building right now in 1907, mm. it's built. Okay, great. Oh, Rez, that's nice. You're he somebody here has family from Edirne and Chorlu also. Um, an interesting question about the music that someone noticed that you use, uh, Simone noticed, you use a recording of a clarinet in several parts of the film. What was the significance of that clip of music and where did it come from? Actually, it's not a clarinet, it's a saxophone. Uh, the music is composed by uh, my good friend, Aydın Akın. I uh, played many uh, Jewish or Sephardic uh, songs to him, then he composed this beautiful uh, music for the documentary. It is original music for documentaries made. Mm, and quite I nice. think the sound is very Sephardic uh, music style. Do you think, mm -hmm. uh, Susan? Mm. Yeah, I think so. Um, it certainly is evocative of that kind of life and that time. Um, an interesting question from Alan, wondering if you interviewed any contemporary Ankara Jews, even though there's very few left. Um, and there's, are they remnants, the people who are there, are they left from the community that existed before or any of them newer arrivals? So did you interview anyone who lives there now? I actually interviewed, but uh, not all of them prefer to be in on the screen. And so I, I made interviews with people uh, who still live in Ankara. Those are the uh, not the new uh, inhabitants coming from the families and they mm -hmm. have background in Ankara from the parents. So are they old? Are they all older uh, people? I mean, both old and young ones, mm. but it's very few as I uh, stated in the uh, presentation. So were you able to collect any documents from them or photographs and, or were you able to make uh, any oral history recording from some of the people like the citizens of Ankara now who didn't want to be on video? Are some of them uh, on audio? I mostly, uh, would you repeat it? Uh, I, I missed the audio part. I was wondering if you collected any material or photographs from mm -hmm. the people who live in Ankara now, the Jewish, the few mm -hmm. Jews who are there. And also mm -hmm. if you've made oral histories, oral recordings, even though they wouldn't do video. Uh, I haven't collected the photos from people who live in Ankara, but mostly I found the photos from Israel. Mm -hmm. They still keep it. Uh, uh, I did not prefer to just make audio recording 
as much as I can, I made uh, video interviews, but mm -hmm. uh, surely I have some talkings and discussions with uh, from the different generations, and they helped me to find uh, the migrators who live in anywhere in the world that I can I could connect it with them. but not the image from Ankara, <laughs> just the, an institution uh, that I found the quarters, old photos I showed in the uh, mm -hmm. presentation. Mm -hmm. And um, there's some in the chat, there's some discussion about when Jews first came to the Ottoman Empire, they were Romani Jews. They came with the Romans in 2,500 years ago, as I understand, correct? Uh, if we are talking for Anatolia, it goes back to 6th century BC. With, That's true. Yeah. yeah. And for Ankara, we have some clues and sources, written sources even. Uh, it goes back to 2nd century BC. It's uh, the early Roman uh, period, the late Hellenistic. And one of the place in Anatolia, the Sardis, uh, it's near to west side of uh, Anatolia, Turkey, near to Ephes. And there is a synagogue still uh, exists mm -hmm. from fifth century BC. It's mm -hmm. one of them. And so Romaniots are the, those times uh, Jewish it's called, it's, as you know, the Sephardic called the later, uh, 500 years ago, when the Ottomans welcomed to the Jews who live in the Iberian Peninsula. Right. So and, it okay. goes back earlier than the Sephardic uh, heritage. And, and earlier Antioch, than the Romans too. Antioch also, the city now we call Antakya, on south uh, east of Turkey, actually south of Turkey on the border of Syria. It is mm -hmm. one of the first settlements, uh, we can say, for Anatolia. Uh, they moved from uh, Babylon, not goes back to Jerusalem, but stayed in uh, Seleucus Empire's uh, Antioch after the Alexander the Great. Then uh, later on, uh, some uh, new settlements in Anatolia, as it mentioned in the film, one mm -hmm. of is Iconium just south of Ankara. And we know that in the Bible, the, the letters to Galatians, it's written to Ankara Jewish community. And also the temple of Augustus still exists, still uh, on erected in Ankara. Mm -hmm. uh, these are our, some sources. Uh, so it's, very old um, background, I guess. It's really remarkable to have so much remnants of the Jewish communities. I've been to Sardis and seen the, the synagogue area and the, the beautiful mosaic that's still left there. And you know, you walk down a street that was all the Jewish artisans and craftspeople and stores. And, and you're such just an amazing uh, site. <laughs> You sh anyone should visit <laughs> Sardis. It really, I, I agree. It really is quite amazing. Um, I'm sorry, I'm like, there's quite a bit happening here. Uh... It is the place, by the way, uh, the coins invited, <laughs> the Lydians, <laughs> Sardis. The, the what? The, the, the money the discovered in there. I mean, the coins, the money. Uh, That's right. In, Lydia, the Lydian uh, site is Sardis. Is. Right. All right. Now, let's see. Um, is there anything that I don't know? You know, if I am, you need to please let me know because there's a lot of chatter. We can probably keep Enver on the on the um, video for a very anything? long time. Okay. Um, there's so some we'll, wonderful by the way, resources uh, people have. Go ahead. 
uh, the, I'm sorry, the movie you... was not in good streaming. Uh -huh. So uh, I think Afra mentioned right. about that. We will make an opportunity for the registered uh, participants to mm -hmm. watch it for 24 yes. hours. Can it's actually he um Ephraim has put the link into the chat so people should look in the mm -hmm. chat and copy it so that you have it after mm -hmm. we close the meeting um and also go to shindc.org so that you can look at the exhibit which will be there I think through the end of May perhaps um mm -hmm. so I just since we're not we're still going on and there's still people here um Sure. There's a question about, did a large Jewish refugee population come to Ankara during the Second World War? Turkey was a safe yeah. haven for many Jews, so. That's correct. Uh, and the universities in Istanbul, in Ankara, uh, welcomed to many Jews, Jewish professors, and they contributed to the shaping of the universities uh, during the World War Seconds. And right. this is a very important point, but uh, it is not exactly uh, related with my uh, Ankara Jewish community. That's why I haven't, I, I did not put it in the documentary, but in the publications, I will uh, make it uh, point out the mark that, I mean, it is also one of the important. So the migrations is not only one way we can say. So, uh, wealth tax is one of the not uh, I mean, it's unacceptable uh, action, but we have such good also uh, actions like welcoming the professors. From yeah, Nazis. I know in 1936, there were uh, many professors, uh, several dozen professors from German universities that were um, welcomed with their families yeah. in, in Turkey. And like you said, helped to set up the university system. And Turkey's has, Turkey has an excellent educational system, the university system. Yeah, mm -hmm. they have yeah. big contributions. Mm -hmm. By the way, everyone, there are incredible resources being shared in the chat. Um, all kinds of things. So you might want to um, be sure to copy it and uh, take advantage of it. Oh, it's nice. Rifat Bali said, I'm a Jewish person from Ankara. He yeah, left hello. In 19 Do you know him? Uh, yeah, I know him. <laughs> it's been a long time that he left, but we are in contact thanks to the social media. Very good. And there's been a couple questions about genealogy. If you have any ideas of how people can pursue finding family connections um, to Turkey and the Ottoman Empire, do you have any uh, suggestions? Sure. Uh, the, the, uh, one of the problem about that, the Surname Act, and people uh, confuse or lose uh, to follow uh, their family trees but mm. uh, they can get help uh, from uh, the Turkish Jewish communities. And there mm -hmm. is a museum in Istanbul, 500 museum, Jewish museum in Istanbul, uh, will be helpful to connect. Yeah. Right. And there's um, the chief rabbi's office sometimes. Yeah, 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 people. yeah, 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 that, that kind of write... sources. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, you can I write believe to the that's the right, uh, correct uh, address uh, that they should uh, communicate, apply. Um, About Ankara, you know, if anyone to... needs uh, uh, individually, if I can help, surely I uh, share my knowledge, my know-how. That's great. Um... I know that in Chorlu, in, in some of the smaller towns, like the all the records were burned when the city hall was burned during the Balkan War. So it's very hard in some of the communities, the smaller communities, to find records, um, you know, the actual paper records. So it's an interesting pursuit. 
for people to mm -hmm. find connections. Um, somebody asked, are census records during the Ottoman Empire helpful? Mm -hmm. Um, exactly, but not only the census, but the, the, the some documents uh, about the landowners that is more helpful. But the problem, uh, even myself, I can not read the Ottoman Turkish. That is very different than, than because it's not the Latin alphabet, but the, uh, of course the experts can do that. And I took mm -hmm. help. Uh, from the experts for the translations and so on for the historical uh, sources. Census, yes, we know, uh, but also the uh, other documents of Ottomans very helpful. And mm -hmm. again, those are the uh, information that I can pub uh, share it on the publications that will be details. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because we know even what they were doing, the, the profession and so on, where they were living, the, each person. We have such mm. uh, sources. That's okay. There's a question about the Surname Act. What was the purpose of the Surname Act? And to whom was it directed? I think in the film you say it was anyone not Muslim was affected by the Surname Act? Um, and what was the purpose, is the question. Uh, the, in Ottoman times, there was no surname for uh, the citizens, just some nicknames and so on. So that makes confusion. This is the reason. But uh, uh, the, the mistake to change the... Uh, People who already have surnames, like the Jewish people, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. they also changed uh, most of them. But mm -hmm. uh, for the uh, other communities, there was no surname, uh, and mm -hmm. which, which makes confusion. So this is the reason why it's put as act. Wait, so just to make sure that I understand, if you were from a community that didn't have a surname in the families, then this would be helpful. Yeah, it's sort of. But if you came from a Jewish yeah. family where you had surnames that connected you, it wasn't helpful. Yeah, because uh, for today, uh, who, who wants to back to the uh, ancestors uh, trying to make connection with the past, that mm -hmm. makes a uh, problematic uh, because it changed mm -hmm. like the I explained Moise Ben Forma becomes Moise Bilman that is the uh, right uh, mm -hmm. um, Enver you definitely need to copy the chat there are people who are offering things to you uh, somebody has a Hebrew Siddur with Turkish in a Turkish tradition modern Turkish that he'd like to donate uh, there's, you know, you can all look also. So save the chat because there's good things for you too. I'm going to save Thank it because there's wonderful resources being shared. Thank you. Thank you, Enver. If, 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 if I'm My coming pleasure. back. Thank you so I, I much. You. This was uh, really a treat. So you and the participants. And if, yeah, so we just lo love to, we'd like to thank everyone again for for joining Sephardic Heritage International in DC or Shin DC. And thank you so much for giving a lovely film that allows us to connect with, with the Jews of Ankara across time and even across border. So thank you so much for that and allowing us to be able to learn more about old narratives from the early 20th century that affected that community and their migrations. And I'd like to thank um, Joseph Bielman and others from, from the Jewish community of Ankara or related that, to that community who are, who are with us here as well. And thank you, Susan Baroka, for, for moderating this. And yes, thank you to our, our community partners, Mikveh Israel Congregation, um, the Synagogue of the American Revolution in Philadelphia. And also thank you to Temple Moses in 
in Florida, in the Sephardic Jewish Brotherhood of America, and Pila Kadosha Yanina in New York. And, and importantly, I thank all of you for, for sharing this experience with us and connecting with us and also with the, the Jewish community of Ankara. And again, you can access the, the video for the next 24 hours, as well as the exhibition on our website to www.shindc.org. If you have any questions, feel free to email us, um, info at shindc.org, and that's info, like information, at shindc.org. Thank you all again. Thank you, Envar Jack. Thank you, Susan Barocas. We look forward to sharing more programs with you. And this is particularly special because we have so many joining us from all over the world, um, including locally. And last but not least, just like to say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers and the guardians out there. And also to, you know, to those moms who are no longer with us, happy Mother's Day and thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for presenting this, Ephraim, and giving us this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Ephraim.